Carnivorous plants are plants that derive some or most of their nutrients from trapping and consuming animals or protozoans, typically insects and other arthropods. However, carnivorous plants generate energy from photosynthesis. Carnivorous plants have adapted to grow in places where the soil is thin or poor in nutrients, especially nitrogen, such as acidic bogs. Charles Darwin wrote Insectivorous Plants, the first well-known treatise on carnivorous plants, in 1875. Carnivorous plants can be found on all continents except Antarctica, as well as many Pacific islands. True carnivory is thought to have evolved independently nine times in five different orders of flowering plants, and is represented by more than a dozen genera. This classification includes at least 583 species that attract, trap, and kill prey, absorbing the resulting available nutrients. This number has increased by approximately three species per year since the year 2000. Additionally, over 300 protocarnivorous plant species in several genera show some but not all of these characteristics. A 2020 assessment has found that roughly one quarter are threatened with extinction from human actions. What makes a plant carnivorous? Plants are considered carnivorous if they have these five traits. 1. Capture prey in traps 2. Kill the captured prey 3. Digest the captured prey 4. Absorb nutrients from the killed and digested prey 5. Use those nutrients to grow and develop. Trapping mechanisms 5 basic trapping mechanisms are found in carnivorous plants. 1. Pitfall traps, pitcher plants, trap prey in a rolled leaf that contains a pool of digestive enzymes or bacteria. 2. Flypaper traps use a sticky mucilage. 3. Snap traps utilize rapid leaf movements. 4. Bladder traps suck in prey with a bladder that generates an internal vacuum. 5. Lobster pot traps, also known as eel traps, use inward pointing hairs to force prey to move towards a digestive organ. Pitfall traps characterized by an internal chamber. Pitfall traps are thought to have evolved independently at least six times. This particular adaptation is found within the families Saraceniaceae, Darlingtonia, Heliumphora, Saracenia, Nepenthaceae, Nepenthes, and Cephalotaceae, Cephalotus. Within the family Bromeliaceae, pitcher morphology and carnivory evolved twice, Brochenia and Catopsis, because these families do not share a common ancestor who also had pitfall trap morphology. Carnivorous pitchers are an example of convergent evolution. A passive trap, pitfall traps attract prey with nectar bribes secreted by the peristome and bright flower-like anthocyanin patterning within the pitcher. The linings of most pitcher plants are covered in a loose coating of waxy flakes which are slippery for insects, causing them to fall into the pitcher. Once within the pitcher structure, Digestive enzymes or mutualistic species break down the prey into an absorbable form for the plant. Water can become trapped within the pitcher, making a habitat for other flora and fauna. This type of water body is called a phytotelma. Flypaper traps The flypaper trap utilizes sticky mucilage or glue. The leaf of flypaper traps is studded with mucilage-secreting glands, which may be short, like those of the butterworts, or long and mobile, like those of many sundews. Flypapers have evolved independently at least five times. There is evidence that some clades of flypaper traps have evolved from morphologically more complex traps such as pitchers. In the genus Pinguicula, the mucilage glands are quite short, sessile, and the leaf, while shiny, giving the genus its common name of butterwort, does not appear carnivorous. However, 
This belies the fact that the leaf is an extremely effective trap of small flying insects, such as fungus gnats, and its surface responds to prey by relatively rapid growth. This thigmotropic growth may involve rolling of the leaf blade to prevent rain from splashing the prey off the leaf surface, or dishing of the surface under the prey to form a shallow digestive pit. Snap Traps the only two active snap traps, the Venus flytrap, Dionaea mishipula, and the waterwheel plant, Aldrovanda vesiculosa, had a common ancestor with the snap trap adaptation, which had evolved from an ancestral lineage that utilized flypaper traps. Their trapping mechanism has also been described as a mouse trap, bear trap, or man trap, based on their shape and rapid movement. However, the term snap trap is preferred as other designations are misleading, particularly with respect to the intended prey. Aldrovanda is aquatic and specialized in catching small invertebrates. Dionaea is terrestrial and catches a variety of arthropods, including spiders. The traps are very similar, with leaves whose terminal section is divided into two lobes, hinged along the midrib, Trigger hairs, three on each lobe in Dionaea mishipula, many more in the case of Aldrovanda, inside the trap lobes are sensitive to touch. When a trigger hair is bent, stretch gated ion channels in the membranes of cells at the base of the trigger hair open, generating an action potential that propagates to cells in the midrib. These cells respond by pumping out ions, which may either cause water to follow by osmosis, collapsing the cells in the midrib, or cause rapid acid growth. The mechanism is still debated, but in any case, changes in the shape of cells in the midrib allow the lobes, held under tension, to snap shut, flipping rapidly from convex to concave and interring the prey. This whole process takes less than a second. In the Venus flytrap, closure in response to raindrops and blown-in debris is prevented by the leaves having a simple memory, for the lobes to shut. Two stimuli are required, 0.5 to 30 seconds apart. Bladder traps. Bladder traps are exclusive to the genus Eutricularia, or bladderworts. The bladders, vesiculi, pump ions out of their interiors. Water follows by osmosis, generating a partial vacuum inside the bladder. The bladder has a small opening, sealed by a hinged door. In aquatic species, the door has a pair of long trigger hairs. Aquatic invertebrates such as Daphnia touch these hairs and deform the door by lever action, releasing the vacuum. The invertebrate is sucked into the bladder, where it is digested. Many species of Eutricularia, such as U. sandersoni, are terrestrial, growing in waterlogged soil, and their trapping mechanism is triggered in a slightly different manner. Bladderworts lack roots, but terrestrial species have anchoring stems that resemble roots. Temperate aquatic bladderworts generally die back to a resting terrian during the winter months and U. Macrorhiza appears to regulate the number of bladders it bears in response to the prevailing nutrient content of its habitat. Lobster Pot Traps A lobster pot trap is a chamber that is easy to enter, and whose exit is either difficult to find or obstructed by inward pointing bristles. Lobster pots are the trapping mechanism in Genlis C, the corkscrew plants. These plants appear to specialize in aquatic protozoa. A Y-shaped modified leaf allows prey to enter but not exit. Inward pointing hairs force the prey to move in a particular direction. Prey entering the spiral entrance that coils around the upper two arms of the Y are forced to move inexorably towards a stomach in the lower arm of the Y, where they are digested. Prey movement is also thought to be encouraged by water movement through the trap, produced in a similar way to the vacuum in bladder traps, and probably evolutionarily related to it.
Subscribe for more educational videos.